Hey everybody, Corinne Blackstone here, and I am going to show you step-by-step -step how to make this beautiful rhinestone tumbler. This project was really fun, and I promise you it's a lot easier than you think it's going to be. I'll link everything that we used down below. That way you can easily find everything and make your own. We're going to be doing this with sublimation, so let's go ahead and get started. For our tumbler, we're going to use this design from Creative Fabrica. But what I love about this is that you can add your own text super easy. And I'm going to show you how to do that and how to create the color so that it matches the cup super easy. So what we'll do first is click download and we're going to download that image. Now, I always save like the stuff that I'm doing into a Cricut folder. That way I kind of can find it easier. So for this one, I'm going to save it under my for videos only folder it just makes it easier for me now i have previously downloaded it because i did test it um, so what i'll do is i'll click save and i want to make sure that i extract my folder so i'm going to open up the folder that i just downloaded you want to go over here and you want to click extract all and then click extract now it's going to ask me if i want to replace my files i'll go ahead and just replace them like I said, I downloaded it just to test it. So what you'll see here is you have your straight tumbler and then you have your tapered. We're gonna be using the straight tumbler. Now we're gonna be using Canva to do this and it's so simple. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. We'll go right over to Canva. It's just canva.com. You don't have to do anything crazy, super easy to do this. Then what I wanna do is I'm gonna choose custom size and I'm gonna use the eight and a half by 11, but you can input your width and height right up here at the top if you don't have that as an option already on your screen. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that little panel. And what I wanna do is open that folder and I'm simply gonna drag and drop this design, this colored image into my Canva folder. So simply drag it and drop it just like you do when you work with Design Space. Now for this, I would recommend you double check your sizing. I always measure my cup before I do anything. I measure the height of the cup and then I also measure around it using a measuring tape. If you click on position, this is where it gives you the information for your width and your height of your design. You can change this based on the size that you're using, but actually this is pretty darn correct for the cup that I'm using, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the name of the person I'm putting this on this cup. Now because I have a branding section of my uh, Canva, I have specific fonts that are just already up, but I'm going to change that font so I'm not worried about it. But the name I'm going to put on there is J-A-V-I-A-H, and I don't want to butcher the pronunciation of the name, so I'm just not going to pronounce it because I'm not good with name pronunciation. But what I am going to do is I'm going to make this a bit bigger because I want to be able to see it, and we'll put it on to our design here in just a moment. But what I want to do is choose a better font because like that one just isn't kind of the vibe. I want it to be more of a script font, something fun, something different. So you can really play around with this and choose whatever font you want to use. It's truly up to you and the design you want to use. So what I always just recommend doing is you can kind of just scroll through the fonts and find something that you like or that you think whoever you're giving it to might like. But I also want to make sure that the font that I'm using is a little bit easier to read because if it's going to be really thin, sometimes when you add the rhinestones, it can make it a little more difficult to read. So I just like to kind of scroll through, see what font really speaks to me and which one I really like the design of. Now again, it's really up to you and the way you wanna do it. So you don't have to use the same fonts that I'm using. You can use whatever font you want, but I'm gonna scroll through, I'm gonna find a font that I like, and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna place this on to our cup design and change the color. So I've just chosen a font. Now I'm going to be honest with you, this font will be different than the one that I used on the actual cup because I can't remember what font I used on the actual cup. I thought I could find it, but I can't. Um, I did do the cup previous to this portion of recording uh, for several reasons because I wanted to make sure that it would come out and be just because I didn't have a lot of time. So I am recording this after the cup's been made, but this is going to be the same concept. 
So the first thing that I want to do before I do anything else is I'm going to change the color of my font just right now so that I can see it. And I'm going to change it to white. Now it's going to look like it disappears, but when you hold it over this part, you can still see it really well. Now you can zoom in a bit on your design if you want. That way you can see it better. And I am going to turn it sideways because I want the name to go up and down. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is size this down because it's way too big. We need it to fit on to our cup and you can really make it kind of as big or as small as you want. It's very much up to you and the way you wanna make this look. Now, the white kind of is a little bit too like stand out for me and the person this is for really likes gold and pink and black, so I thought this one would be really pretty. So what I wanna do is if I wanna choose a pink that's gonna match these pinks, you can do this really easy in Canva. You're gonna go to the little A button. You're gonna click on that where it's got like the little um, colors under it. Then under document colors, right here is add new color. When you click on that, it's gonna bring up this like advanced color selection. But what I want you to do is use this little dropper and this will pick a color from your design. Choose that little dropper and then all you're gonna do is kind of hold it over and hover it around in the pink area until you find a pink that you're happy with. And that way it's gonna be a color that's being pulled already from the design. Now, if you don't like the one you chose, that's okay. Click on it again, and you can click on this little dropper guy, and then you can choose a different shade. So it's really up to you and the way you wanna do it. Now, I kinda of like the first shade I had, so I'm just gonna click undo, and it's gonna change it back to the first shade. Now, from here, uh, again, double check your sizing. I don't exactly remember the size of my cup, but it's always going to be different um, depending on the cup brand, the cup size. So just make sure that you are, in fact, measuring your cup. Um, but what you want to do is you're going to go to share and you're going to click on download. Now, I find that for me, I find that I get really, really good quality by just using the PDF for print. But you could also download this as a PNG and print it from there. It's truly up to you, but what you'll do is choose whichever one you want to use. I'm going to use the PDF print. What I want to do is I'm going to go to CMYK. This is best for printing. And then I'm going to click on download. Now it's going to download my design and it's going to then bring up a folder and ask me where I want to save my design. I'm fine with saving it right here into my four videos only. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click save. Then you wanna open up that PDF file and we're gonna just go ahead and print this. It's super easy to do, just click print. And what I want you to do is you're gonna go under more settings and you wanna use print using system dialog. Choose that and it's gonna open up this extra dialog setting. Now I'm doing this with sublimation, so I wanna choose my ST4000 and I'm gonna choose preferences. And then I wanna make sure, I always change my plain paper to premium presentation paper, matte. I wanna change my quality from standard to high and I wanna make sure color is selected. Now over under more options, you're gonna be turning off high speed print. It might also be called bio-directional printing. And I want you to make sure that you turn the mirror option on. Because this has words on it, you need to make sure that you mirror your image or the words will be backwards on your cup. Then simply click OK and click Print. Now I'm going to take you over. We're going to get the tumbler already. We are going to press it. And then I'm going to show you how I add the rhinestones to my tumblers. And I'll show you the final product. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to trim this down. Now you can use a paper trimmer if you desire. I am not a big fan. I'm not amazing with the paper trimmer for some reason. I'm a little bit better if I just use scissors and I go slow. So I'm just going along the edge and I want to get right up against the print. Now I will say by doing this with rhinestones, it is very forgiving. Um, so that's something I want you to know. Uh, if you have a little seam, it probably won't be very noticeable. If you have a big seam, you'll see it. But a really small seam is not going to be the end of the world because the rhinestones are going to hide any of those little imperfections. Now 
Now, our tumbler is just a little 16 ounce guy. I like using these smaller ones for the rhinestones. I feel like the bigger ones can sometimes be a little bit too big. Um, now, I do wanna wipe this down because I have touched this a bunch. I'm gonna wipe this down with just an alcohol wipe and I'm gonna let it dry and then we're gonna go ahead and put our design on it. Now that our cup is dry, what I want to do is I'm just going to fit the paper on here. I always just do a quick check. I check it when I print it too, but I also just want to check it now that I've got it all cut. It looks like it's good. So what I do is I line mine up. Now again, remember because we're rhinestoning, this is a little more forgiving. And I want to make sure that it lines up with the top of the cup. That's why I have it upside down. And I just press it on to the table and get everything lined up. And I make sure that it's well held down. And then I have this super awesome tape dispenser. It's a little bit loud, but it is fantastic. It pre-cuts the tape for me. So what I'm able to do is keep the paper really, really tight on the cup and then pull it so that it's touching. And then all I want to do is tape the seam down. Now for my seam, I do tape it all the way down. And I want to make sure that I'm keeping it really, really tight. There are like things you can buy to help you keep it tight, but truly I just use my hands and just squeeze it and it stays really tight. So I need to get a little bit more tape, just one more piece. Now this does pre-cut my tape for me, which is fabulous. I love that. And we're good to go. Now that I have this done, this does have a little bit of a tapered bottom, so we will probably have a little ghosting on the bottom. Even if I were to tape it, it would still ghost a little bit. I'm not worried about the ghosting. Again, the rhinestones will cover it. Now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna take some butcher paper, and I wanna make sure that when I put my butcher paper on, that it does not have a seam right where the other seam is. So I just wanna make sure that the two seams don't line up. Now, you do wanna make sure that your butcher paper is also nice and tight. So I just give this a little squeezy squeeze and then I just put one piece of tape. You don't need a lot of tape when doing this. I promise you don't. You can leave the overhang on if you'd like to. Totally up to you, whatever you wanna do. Now one trick I will say is you wanna watch because sometimes your cup can shift inside and it can move your paper. So just be very aware of that. Now I'm pulling my press in because what we wanna do is we want to check the fit of our cup into this. So I can already say this is probably too loose. I did something kind of wide the other day, but what I do is I put my cup in and you just want to see if it moves. And you see how easily it moves? We don't want it to do that. And this is off, it's not hot at all. And I want to make sure that I keep it off while I'm doing the adjustment. You don't want to do it while it's hot because it can actually cause the ink to transfer. So this is completely cool. I haven't plugged it in in days. So now all I'm doing is adjusting the two knobs back here, and that is what adjusts the uh, tightness, so the pressure onto your cup. That is still way too loose, so we've got quite a while to go. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep twisting these. I do try to twist them pretty evenly, but honestly, a lot of times I'll just do one and then come back and get the other one pretty even. It's easy to see when they're straight, so just take your time, and this one, like I said, is a skinnier tumbler than the bigger cup I did. I did a mug the other day, so it's much thinner. So I just wanna go ahead and get this all in. And I'm just gonna test it a few times. Like we're getting closer, but it's still moving a little more than I would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep putting a little more pressure on this because you do wanna do this with a nice, heavy pressure. So again, it's still not quite there, so we'll just keep going. Once this is on to where the pressure is, then I will show you guys how to set this and get everything ready for your press. The first thing we need to do is turn the heat press on. There is a big green button over on the side to turn it on. Now we need to set it for our time and our temperature. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit the set button and that's gonna offer us our temperature, which is already set to 385. If you need to change it, you can hit the up or the down arrow to do so. Then hit set again and that's for our time. Now 220 is too long for this, so I am gonna press it down. This only presses for about 120 seconds. However, the way I do it is I will turn my tumbler about halfway through. So I don't set it for the full 120 seconds. I usually go about 70 seconds and then I will rotate. So because of that, I like to set mine right at 70 seconds. Then just hit set again and it's gonna go ahead and heat up to temperature, should go pretty quickly. 
I wanted to turn the press so that you could see better how I insert the tumbler into the press. I always just kind of double check and make sure nothing slid around. And then all I do is I push this in again, being careful not to um, like slide the paper on the tumbler. Then I go ahead and get it in. Now you want to make sure that it's in centered into your press. Go ahead and press this down and we're going to let this heat for 70 seconds. Then what we're going to need to do is rotate it a little bit so that it's not on the seam anymore from where the press is because there is a little bit of a hole right here where none of the heat gets to. It's almost done with this first press so it will beep. Tell us it's done so go ahead and pull this back and then what you want to do you're going to have some steam and stuff just take your tumbler and I just want you to turn it a little bit. You don't have to turn it a ton. I usually turn it like I don't know, like half a turn and then I just go ahead and press it again and it's going to again press for that 70 seconds. That is just to prevent any of this type of seam from this area showing. It's going to allow it to press really well and that way you're going to get a full tumbler wrap without having any issues. Now that the press is fully complete, it's going to beep. You go ahead and take this out. Now I want you to have something to place your tumbler on that is heat resistant. I'm using my heat pressing mat. And then I want you to have heat gloves because this is very, very hot. The next thing I do is I always turn my press off and I'm gonna slide this over a little bit just so that it's out of the way. So you wanna make sure to keep your press off. Then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the paper. So this is the butcher paper. And I usually just rip this off. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the paper that is on the actual tumbler. Now there are some people that can do this tape trick and I tried and I can never get it right. I always forget to do it the way they show. So instead, I have to peel my tape one by one. But a lot of times I can just rip my paper back and I can get the tape off that way. If you're having trouble, you can just use like your nail and stuff. You just need to be careful because this is hot. So just be gentle and try not to burn yourself. Um, these gloves do eventually let some of the heat through. So just be aware of that. So then I'm going to go ahead and get this paper off. And voila, we have our cup. Now I'm going to set it here, let it cool down. There is a little bit of like a color discrepancy that is from the actual print itself, not from my printer, but I don't think it's going to be noticeable once we put the, um, rhinestones on it but look at how cute like the black came out really nice the bottom looks pretty good um, I did forget to take off the little plastic sticker but that's okay so let's go ahead and let this cool we're gonna need to let this cool completely before we can start rhinestoning we are ready to start rhinestoning so I have a rhinestone pickup tool gem tack glue which is my favorite glue to use for this I have some clear rhinestones these are AB stones meaning that they're cut so they are faceted, so they're really cool. I have like a rogue gold one in there, so I gotta make sure to watch for that. Um, I've ordered these and there's just a random one. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the top, and I'm actually gonna turn it so that the top is closer to me, but we are gonna go around the top edge. I do also have a cup cradle. It's just a 3D printed cup cradle that helps hold this from rolling around my table. Uh, I usually do use a gemstone tray, but I did find the last time I made one of these that it was so much easier to just pour them out on my table and just kind of spread them out. And it's really easy to tell which ones are right side up and which ones are not. I'm going to get this gold one out of the way. He's a, just a little rogue friend that decided he was going to join us. Now, the gem tack glue, it's been a little while since I've used it, so I do like to warm it up in my hands a little bit. I just do this with it upside down. Um, it is pretty cold in my basement, which is where my craft room is. So anytime I use glue in the winter, I do tend to just use my hands and just run it through my hands. It's just a trick if you have like a colder house or a basement where you've kept this stuff. Once I've warmed up the glue, the one thing I really like about Gem Tack is it's white when you put it on and then it goes clear when it dries. It's completely clear. I've actually gotten it onto the top of the gems before by accident and it doesn't affect them in any way. So you don't have to worry about that. I do see I've got another funny gem. It looks like there's just two gems stuck together those apart um so you can see where you laid the glue which i love versus like e6000 which i don't love um also sometimes you do need to declog and one thing that's great about this gemstone tool it has a little um needle in it that you can push through and i usually will just do that a couple times and then you want to make sure you clean it off before you put this away 
So you can see here that it's white when I lay it down. Now what I do is I take the tip and I just spread that glue out because you don't want a huge glob of the glue. And I'm just gonna spread it out all along the top here where I can actually like see what I'm doing. And so all I do is I just use that tip, just spread it out. Then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this so that I can start with one side. I'm gonna put the glue away. But one thing that I like to do is I'll try to make sure that I keep the glue upside down. So I will either use like my iVine Berry little holder tool or I can put it you know, in a thing of tape, whatever I've got, but something to hold it down. Then I'm gonna be using the wax tip side of my gem tool. And then all I need to do is get a gem, pick it up, and then all I have to do is place it on to the cup. Now I wanna make sure that the top row is nice and even. Now a lot of these are gonna be upside down, so just make sure that you're aware of that and like you can use like a gem tray that'll actually flip them. I just didn't grab mine and I'm too lazy to go get it. So all I do is I just place the gems and they're able to be moved a bit, so you can actually move these around just so that it's easier to um, like place them. Because once you've placed them, the glue doesn't dry instantly, which I think is good because um, it gives you time to go through and fix any that might be a little off or if you want to just kind of scooch them a little closer together, you can do that. Now, I will tell you this is a time consuming process and I really do recommend having a bright light overhead because you can move and I can actually see which stones are right side up and which ones are upside down. So you want to be putting the flat side against your tumbler. So it's really easy to tell which ones are the correct way and which ones aren't by doing this. Now all I'm doing, it's just going to go all the way around the tumbler just like this. This is not like rocket science. This is a pretty easy thing. If you want to get started using like rhinestones and what they call blinging things, this is the way to start truly. Start with clear and then learn how to like lay them out and learn how to work with them. And then you can move on to more dedicated, difficult items. So I'm gonna go ahead and you'll probably see this in several parts because this does take a couple of days of my time to do because I can't stand here and rhinestone for like hours. Um, it will hurt my back eventually but I will try to get as many done as I can. And then I will take my fingernail and just kind of run it along the top just to make sure that there aren't any stones that are sticking above the lip because you don't want them above the lip at all. Any of the ones that are sticking out can actually get damaged. Uh, they could fall off easier. So you just want to make sure that you're making them so they're not over the edge. There's no like edge to grab onto. So again, I'm gonna let you guys watch this in super speed. I wanted to stop here because I did let this dry overnight, but you can still see that some of them are a little white under them. Totally normal. The glue takes a little bit of time to fully dry. Now I also am going to be using some of these really small crystals. They're really, really little to fill in any areas that maybe the crystals didn't fill quite right. Or I have one that's sitting a little funny that I need to peel off. I have one right here that I, for some reason it's shifted. So I'm probably going to just pop it off with my finger and then I'll fill that back in with the smaller crystals later. But now that that's dry enough, we can kind of move on 
to another section. So I'm gonna just turn it. Now you do wanna be gentle and careful when turning, but I'm gonna start working along the side of it. We're gonna work our way all the way around and then we'll have a finished cup. Mm -hmm.